Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 23 rebuild. And as you can tell by the title, we are here to rebuild the Miami Dolphins, but with Caleb Williams. Yes, that's right. I'm in the year 2023, about to enter the 2024 NFL draft to select Caleb Williams because he said that he would like to go to the Miami Dolphins. And I think that's honestly because uh, he college players get paid now, and he probably realized that getting uh, that USC University of Southern California, California state income tax sucks. So he probably wanted to go to a warm weather state and wanted to have no state income tax. Miami Dolphins would be perfect for that. And then he would also have elite weapons. But this is the first time I'm looking at the team. I have not done anything. I have simulated all the way to the 2023 off season. So that way I can get into the 2024 draft. And this is what we got. No way. <laughs> we get his teammate, Jordan Addison, the Dolphins selected. I have no idea why they would do that whenever they have Cedric Wilson, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Got James Robinson. This guy, I don't know who that is. Uh, we got Jones, who they picked up in the draft. Dewad Jones out of Ohio State. Okay, they picked him as well. Jawan Johnson, Robert Hunt. Who is this guy? Cody Mach. Okay, I don't know who that guy is. And then we're going to be, of course, trading away Tua. He has superstar dev, I know. But we're going to be trading away Tua to get Caleb Williams. Defensively, Leighton Vander Esch, J um, Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, Leighton Vander Esch, and this guy. Who is this guy? Was he always on the Dolphins? I think he probably was. But Leighton Vander Esch, Jawan Johnson looks about it. Yeah, Leighton Vander Esch, Jawan Johnson, Jordan Addison, a couple new offensive lineman pieces, and James Robinson is the only difference I really know in this team and our fullback maybe. But um, I'm going to change the schemes to what I always do, which is 4-3 under it and then dallas offense and the chiefs defense if you guys were ever wondering that nobody retires in the afc east and then the dolphins are nine and eight this season so we i guess we're gonna have to trade up pretty far in the draft but let's move in to is there no re-signings oh i guess it auto handles the re-signings i didn't turn that off in time well, let's just move into free agency and see what we got then. So I didn't sign anyone in free agency because I did notice that we lost Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis on the offensive line. Well, on the defensive line, I mean. So we do need to make, make some room for some cap casualties. So I am saving money because the CPU just signs random players and I cannot control that. But Lamar Jackson to the Lions, crazy. Jalen Hurts. To the Giants, Rashawn Gary to the Vikings, Chris Lindstrom to the Giants, Justin Herbert to the Seahawks, mm -hmm. Trayvon Diggs to the Falcons, Daniel Hunter to the Packers, Christian Wilkins to the Jets. So the Los Angeles Chargers had the number one overall pick. So I am sending Tua to California and sending California QB Caleb Williams to Miami for pick number 20 and Tua Tungavailoa for pick number one. And apparently the Chargers let Justin Herbert go for go to uh, what you call it. Seattle Seahawks, I don't know why I wasn't clicking with that. But anyways, we are here to draft the man, Caleb Williams out of USC, six foot one. Really, I thought it was a lot taller than that. Great athlete, great all around, top five player. Hidden development, 93 throw power, 88 speed, great acceleration, amazing player, and he's going to be our QB. In the second round, I'm picking up center Jake Renfro out of Cincinnati, hidden development, six foot three, 314, 88 strength. This is the team after the draft. I may want to cut Connor Williams just so that way I have the rookie center who's not getting paid. Well, yeah, who I don't have to pay. So I'm just going to actually trade Connor Williams real quick. Yeah, sh to, sure, to the Cincinnati Bengals. That makes sense for a third and a four. I think that's fair. And come on, actually, let me click the accept. There we go. Connor Williams for a third and a four. I probably could have gotten a second out of him, but it's fine. I wanted to run Renfro to start. Cedric Wilson, I honestly just don't want. Can I cut him? I'll cut Cedric Wilson because I have Jordan Addison. No need for Cedric Wilson. I'm already making changes to the teams. Caleb Williams, 79 overall. James Robinson is not even starting. Defensively looking into it. I don't even want Leighton Vander Ash. I just kind of have him. Then Bradley Chubb. I'm going to officially move him down to right end. Then Emmanuel Ogba will play left end. So right end for Bradley Chubb. Jalen Phillips will remain at Right outside linebacker. I think that's his designated position, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right outside linebacker. Fine with that. And where is the rest of the team? Byron Jones, Xavier, and Howard are taking up a lot of money, but I'm not going to cut them just yet. I'm going to wait on that. Specialist, this is what we got. Xavier and Howard, Jordan Addison is going to be playing in the slot. Jerome Baker, 
Do I want Jerome Baker at left outside line? Yeah, sure. I'll take Jerome Baker at left outside linebacker. I know this is kind of a lot to put on people already at the start of the video because we're already two years ahead. But Caleb Williams on the Dolphins, I think this is going to be a hype rebuild. I don't think anyone else has done this rebuild yet. If they have, let me know down in the comments below. Check out their channel. And yeah, apart from that, guys, it is now time to get into the first season with Caleb Williams on the Miami Dolphins. So let's move into it. Now, here we are at the midseason mark as we are 5-2, second the division, offense and defense both seem to be doing pretty good. I set the scouting national focus to defensive tackle. Jalen Waddle wants to be here, and I want him to. Going to give him a five-year deal. Wants more money. Guess he doesn't want to be here. Javon Holland. I do want to keep him around, too. I don't know how much money we have, though, and can't afford him either. He doesn't want to play. Byron Jones. I'll do a one-year deal. Mm, I'll wait for this to go down. Wait for his regression to hit because that's too much of an offer for how uh, old he is. Jerome Baker's 27. I don't know if I can hand out this contract yet. I need to prioritize the others. I do want to keep Cater here just because he has start Evan. He's 25. Everyone else here can walk. I do want to make sure I re-sign those players. And I do want Jalen Phillips, but he has no interest in being here. But for now, let's just move into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs. Caleb's first season, he wins the AFC East. 11-6, and top the division here to face his division rivals, the 10-7 and Jets. And we just faced our division rivals the previous week. Buffalo Bills coming off a win at rookie year for Caleb Williams. An amazing situation. Already looks like almost top 10 QB. 16th best offense in the NFL. Third best defense. 4,800 yards, 36 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Great rookie year. And eh, running back's not doing good. Jalen Waddle, almost 1,100 yards, 11 touchdowns. Tyree Kill, 1,000 yards, and a handful of other players at 1,000 yards, including Jawan Johnson and Jordan Addison. Looking at it defensively, Leighton Vander Ash, 123 tackles, tackles for a loss, 17 for Brandon Dorless, I think. I don't know how you pronounce that. Bradley Chubb, 17 and a half, and Emmanuel Ogbo with 17. Sacks, three interceptions for Javon Holland and a handful of other people. Safeties, two for Emmanuel Ogba and one for Mike Morris. What a name. Defensive tackles, not defensive tackles, defensive touchdowns. One for Kadar, I believe is how you pronounce his name. But let's see, Caleb Williams can get his first ever playoff win. And he does. 24 to 27 here to face the 13 and 4 Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round. He's finally going to get a taste of Patrick Mahomes and he beats him. Here to face the 11-6 division rivals, the New England Patriots. We've had to play three division rivals in the past four weeks now. <laughs> but anyways, let's move in to the conference championship to see if Caleb Williams can make the Super Bowl in his rookie season. Here we are in the Super Bowl with home field advantage playing at Miami. 10 to nothing start for the New England Patriots, though. And it is 10 to 7. Come on, Caleb Williams. 10 to 14. Not home field advantage in the Super Bowl. I can't believe I just said that. Home, I thought this was the Super Bowl for some reason, but it's not. It is the conference championship. Sorry. 17 to 17 in the fourth quarter and 20 to 17, we're going to lose. I think we would have had home field advantage too if we won. We're going to lose to Mac Jones and our division rivals in the conference championship. Still an amazing run for Caleb Williams. Let's move to the offseason. And the Patriots do it again to the Falcons. Let's see if they got a comeback. But with Mac Jones winning the Super Bowl MVP, uh, Eagles quarterback Jake Heiner wins the league MVP. I'm be honest, I don't know who that is. But um, yeah, I'm probably a moron. And wow, really? You're going to tell me Caleb Williams doesn't win Offensive Rookie of the Year? That's kind of crazy to me. But let's see what his development is. Is it X Factor? Is it Superstar? It is Superstar development for Caleb Williams. Like to see that. Jordan Addison doesn't get Superstar. Wish he did. Renfro only has Star Dev. Juwan Johnson gets Star Dev. Bradley Chubb gets Superstar Dev. And Brock... Brandon, no, I was about to say Brandon Jones. This is Brandon Jones. Byron Jones gets super started, but I don't know how long he's going to last with this team. But let's move to the resign players. Here we are with the 2024 retirements. Brandon Grant, no, Graham Gano on the Patriots. And Lawrence Guy finished with the Super Bowl win. Von Miller retires on the Bills. And it is, the, yeah, 2024. And players ready to negotiate. We still do have Jalen Waddle here. They would all increase your bonus. I don't know what much more you want. And he resigns. Javon Holland, give you a player-friendly deal. Not very player, but just player-friendly. Then five years as well. And then he resigns. That's cool with me. Byron Jones, is it cheaper? Yes, it is cheaper. I'm glad I waited. And I'll do, yeah, I'll just do a one-year deal with him. He resigns. Jalen Phillips, I want back. Jerome Baker has star dev now and wants even more money. He's 28. Can you do a team-friendly and I'll do that? And he, he doesn't want to. That's fine with me. How much does it take to tag him? 25 million? He can walk. Sorry. Sorry, Jerome Baker fans. I'm going to resign this cornerback, and I also want Jalen Phillips back. Very player-friendly deal, and he still doesn't want to play. Uh, $21 million? Sure, I'll tag him. 
I'll tag him for 21 million. I'm not going to tag Jerome Baker for 25. But how much money do we have to spend in free agency? We have 41 million. Let's move into it. Here we are after free agency getting X Factor, Najee Harris, Asante Samuel, and Javon Hargrave as a rental player. Great free agency for us. Let's move into the draft. In the first round, I'm picking up defensive tackle. Maurice Meekins out of Florida, hidden development, six foot five, 300 pounds, 88 strength, and pretty athletic for being 300 pounds. Here we are in year number two. It looks like the CPU picked up this guy named Greenfield. I'm cool with that. He's going to be the wide receiver number four. Glad I cut Cedric Wilson. Running back depth is great. Jawan Johnson's looking good as well. How old is Jawan Johnson? Pretty young, right? Oh, never mind. 28. Did not know that. Okay. Uh, defensively, Meekins is a 73 overall. That's nice. Jalen Phillips is starting at left outside linebacker, which I don't really know how I feel about that. Maybe Justin Flo will move to left outside linebacker, so that way we can just have Jalen Phillips playing his correct position. Justin Flo, what a name, by the way. Justin Flo is such, such a cool name, but um, Flo, please actually start your position. I did not click on Byron Jones. Controller, please work. I know people are probably frustrated watching this because I have to refresh the roster and remove Greenfield up defensively. Yep, Flo is there. And Asante Samuel is our best DB, but look how much depth we have at DB. Holy shit. Specialist. Um, Greenfield, do I want? Uh, I don't want him in the slot. Najee Harris, I want as my power back as well. I just want to play in everything. James Robinson's going to move. Uh, actually, no, James Robinson is not that good. And everybody else here looks fine with me. Emmanuel Ogba isn't even rushing off the edge. And apart from that, guys, it is now time to move into the second season with Caleb Williams. Here we are at the midseason mark as we are 4-3 top of the division. Offensive points per game is 27th. Okay, interesting. Scouting national focus. I think I do need to do defensive tackle again because Javon Hargrave is just a rental player. Maybe, maybe linebacker. For now, I just do a defensive tackle again. I didn't even need to adjust that because it was already set to defensive tackle. Whatever. Anyways, players ready to negotiate. Let's see who we have here as we are going to have Jalen Phillips. Still doesn't want to be with the team. Very player friendly deal, man. And he resigns. Finally. Byron Jones, I'll wait for him to regress again. Carson Strong, oh man, I forgot about this dude. Robert Hunt, gonna do a three-year deal with Robert Hunt, and then here he signs with that. Brandon Jones doesn't wanna be here. This is stupid cheap, can I just give him player friendly? He still wants more, he can walk if he wants even more than that. Javon Hargrave can walk. Jawan Johnson's just old, he can walk. Does he want a one-year deal? No, he wants three. I'll, um, hold up. I'll see if he wants one year. If he wants one year, I'll be cool with it. Other than that, he can just walk. Okay, he's he's cool with the one year deal. I'm cool with it too. And then Emmanuel Ogba is just old. He can unfortunately walk as well. Yeah, everyone else is fine. And apart from that, guys, I'm going to see if Byron Jones wants to stay here at the end of the offseason, but it's now time to move into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs going 10 and 7 top of the division. Patriots are out of here. Let's go. But we have to face the 12 and 5 Bengals, who we just lost to by three points in the previous week. But stats and awards. Let's see what we got for Caleb Williams. Terrible season. Okay. Eighth best offense in the NFL. And the fourth best defense. 4,600 yards, 29 touchdowns. Nine. That's not a horrible ratio. But like, come on, dude. Only 26 touchdowns. Najee went crazy. That's why. Okay. 19 touchdowns, 5.7 per carry, and 1,700 yards. Jordan Addison. 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 1,100 yards. Jalen Waddle, not even 1,000 yards and only three touchdowns. Leighton Van Der Esch, 130 tackles. Tackles for a loss, 13 for Emmanuel Ogba. Sacks, 15 and a half for Bradley Chubb, 7 and a half for Jalen Phillips. Interceptions, two for Leighton Van Der Esch. Safeties on the team is one for Justin Flo. And uh, defensive touchdowns is one for Brandon Jones. So, apart from that, guys, let's see what we got against the Cincinnati Bengals. Can we beat them even though we lost in week 18 with an underperforming QB? And we do. Here to face the 13 and 4 Pittsburgh Steelers. Can we beat them to go back to back AFC Conference Championships with Caleb Williams? Caleb Williams is here to face the 12 and 5 Kansas City Chiefs. I'm not going to waste any time. Let's move into it. Here we are against the Chiefs in the Chiefs Kingdom. 7 to 7 start currently. 14 to 7. Good stuff, Caleb Williams or Najee Harris, whoever is putting in the work. 14 to 21. Come on, guys. Let's get back at it. Come on. 14 to 21 and a half. Coming out of the half, 21-21, 28-21. There we go. That's what I'd like to see. Let's get a two-score lead. That's what I'd like to see. One score lead. Just hold on. Run the ball. Why didn't you run the ball at the end? Thank God they held on there. And Caleb Williams is moving on to the Super Bowl in his second year. Let's move into it. Here we are in the Super Bowl here to face the 11-6 San Francisco 49ers. Who is their QB? Is it Brock Purdy? It could be. It could be Trey Lance as well. It is Brock Purdy. Trey Lance is no longer on the team. And we are going to see what upgrades we have 
for the Miami Dolphins. Offensively, we have the same team. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, quite the stellar performance. But Jordan Addison, didn't he have a stellar season? Eh, it's not stellar. Okay, I'll keep him at the start. I have nothing insane there. And defensively looking into it, Meekins hasn't even shown his development. That's really upsetting. I really would have liked to see that. But uh, Flo gets star dev. That's nice to see. And nobody else gets an upgrade, which is unfortunate. But now, time to move into the Super Bowl to face against the San Francisco 49ers and Brock Purdy. And here we are in Atlanta on the East Coast, so it may, may have been easier travel for us. So maybe we have the advantage here. No, I'm just kidding. In Madden, that shit doesn't actually apply. 14 to 14 in the second quarter, 14 to 14 at the halftime, and 17 to 14. Come on, let's take back the lead. 7 to 17. Come on, let's not lose. Let's not lose. We're so close. 20 to 17, 20, 20 overtime. And we take it from the San Francisco 49ers right in front of them. Caleb Williams wearing number 16. I don't know if he wore 16 in college. I don't think he did. But anyways, that is going to cap off a successful rebuild. Let's move into the offseason. Yeah, so Caleb Williams wins the Super Bowl MVP and he also wears number 13 in college. Jake Heiner also wins back-to-back -back league MVPs with the Eagles. Okay, and there are no awards here for the Miami Dolphins. We've already seen the development upgrades. Let's move into the re-signings. In the AFC East, Teron Armstead retires. That's going to be a problem. I would have liked him for the entire rebuild, but I didn't know if he was going to stay. But he caps off with a Super Bowl win. And Brand Brian, no, Byron Jones. God, I keep calling him all the wrong names. Another easy, cheap deal. I'll take him for that. Carson Strong, no. Brandon Jones just doesn't want to be here, so I'm not going to resign him. Javon Hargraves, regress too far. Don't want Emmanuel Ogba. Actually, how cheap is he? I'll do a one-year deal. This is not bad. I'll do a one-year deal with Emmanuel Ogba, and everybody else can walk fine with that. So apart from that, guys, let's move into free agency and get a new left tackle. Here we are after free agency getting the Baltimore duo in Mark Andrews and Kyle Hamilton. They both want to win a Super Bowl, so why not come to Miami? Let's move into the draft. In the first round, I'm picking up a right tackle, Joey Teague out of Arkansas, 6'6", 318, and I'm going to move him to left tackle. Here we are after the draft, and Teague, uh, I guess I'll move... Do I move Jones? No, because he's on his final year of his contract. And guess what? I don't want to pay him. <laughs> That's what a, lo a lot of what drafting is. People are like, oh, well, why don't you just trade your draft picks for good players? Because they don't got to pay him for four years. That's why. So I accidentally moved him to left guard. I need to move him officially to left tackle. Oh, it didn't officially move him to left guard. Good stuff. So we're going to move him to left tackle. And I think he should just be a good... He's not going to be obviously what Teron Armstead was, but he's just going to be good maybe for a little bit in the long term, but for right now, he's all right. And yeah, receiving core is going crazy. Greenfield is a superstar dad, by the way. That's crazy. Our team keeps getting better and better, especially like look at all the weapons he has. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Jordan Addison, Greenfield, Mark Andrews, Juwan Johnson, a good offensive line, great depth at running back core with an X-Factor Najee Harris, and he's got a good defense to back him up too. Like, this is a great team to be on for him. And yeah, I really love the depth here. Kyle Hamilton's a great addition to the team as well. And we got everything that we need. So apart from that, guys, let's move into the third season and the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark as we are 5-2, and two, top of the division. Scouting national focus. Let's see what we got here. As we are going to have... Man, do I want... I'm not going to do a defensive tackle again. I think I'm going to go middle linebacker here. Our offense is stacked. Our offense is absolutely stacked. We don't need anyone else there. And... We're going to players scouting national, not scouting national focus, players ready to re-sign and negotiate. I don't know why I keep stumbling over my words. Tyree kind of wants to be here. I'll still, yeah, I'll give him a three-year deal, increase the bonus, and that should be good. And he re-signs. Leighton Vander Ash doesn't want to be here. I want to, I don't really want him either, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I really don't want him either. He's 30 years old. He's probably going to be like an 84 at the end of the season. Jordan Addison is here though. Do want him long-term, and he re-signs. And... The Juan Jones, this is why I didn't want to move him to left tackle, so that way I can pay him now, and he gets re-signed. You, how cheap are you? Will you do team-friendly? I'll do that if you do team-friendly. Oh, wow. Well, I'd just love to prove you wrong. Yeah, up yours, buddy. We're going to win the Super Bowl without you. Juwan Johnson can walk again. Yeah, sure, you may be good depth. I just don't want to pay him. Left guard, I'll do four-year deal. I'll be fine with that. It's pretty cheap anyways, and he re-signs. Uh, I was about to say Dwayne Robinson, James Robinson. I don't want to resign. Byron Jones can finally walk. I don't think I'm going to resign him again. Xavier Howard, same deal. Same deal with Emmanuel Ogba. But Noah, I do want to resign just because he's young. Well, actually, he's going to be 27. I'll give him a three year deal probably. Need some depth at DB. But apart from that, guys, it's now time to move in to the playoffs. 
Here we are in the playoffs. Look at those team ranks. All in the greens. Love to see it. 15 and 2, top of the division, first round bye. Coming off a win to the Broncos. Team's going crazy. Caleb Williams, also going crazy. Top 10 quarterback. Don't think he's going to get league MVP as Desmond Ritter wins it. And Caleb Williams is fifth for league MVP. Third best offense in the NFL. And defensively, we are at second. Caleb Williams, 4,800 yards, 36 touchdowns, seven receptions. Great ratio. 70% completion percentage is good, too. Najee Harris, exactly 300 attempts, 25 touchdowns, 5.2 per carry, 1,500 yards. Great season. Jordan Addison, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. That deserves superstar dev, I think, in my opinion. And hold up. Did uh, Terry Kill, Mark Andrews did good. Wow, Greenfield is just getting no reps, even though he is superstar dev. Okay. Defensively, Justin Flo, 130 tackles, tackles for a loss, 19 for Emmanuel Ogba, sacks, 18.5 for Bradley Chubb, 6.5 for Jalen Phillips, interceptions, 4 for Leighton Vander Ash, and a handful of other people. And safeties is 1 for Justin Flo, and defensive touchdowns is 0. Justin Flo has actually been doing pretty good for us. I like him. Better than Vander Ash. Let's see who we're going to be facing in the divisional round. We already won the Super Bowl. It's already a successful rebuild, but why not? Ooh, the Chargers. Do they got Tua? Did they re-sign Tua is the question after getting him with the number one overall pick. The Chargers have Tua Tungavailoa. Let's see it, boys. Let's see it. Your replacement won the Super Bowl. Now he's about to put you in the ground. Come on. Don't prove me wrong. Okay, yep. He, nice stuff. Nice stuff. Didn't want him to prove me wrong, but we're here to face the 14-3 Cleveland Browns. I'm just going to simulate it because we've already won the Super Bowl. Let's see if we can make it back-to-back -back Super Bowls, and we do. Here to face the Detroit Lions, who are also going after Mark Andrews in the Super Bowl. But Mark Andrews shows us for the no state income tax. Is Jared Goofball still their quarterback? I'm assuming it's Will Levis, if I had to take a guess. Let's see what they got. It is Lamar Jackson, baby. Wow. Okay, Lamar to the Lions. Actually, we did look at free agency, and it was Lamar Jackson. I did look at free agency in the first year. But Caleb Williams, top five for league MVP. If you're going to get mad at me, you can get mad at me. Dak Prescott has a superstar X factor. So if this guy gets top five for league MVP and Dak Prescott isn't even considered for it, then yeah, I'm going to give Caleb Williams superstar X factor. Jordan Addison had a great season. 14 touchdowns, what, 1,200 yards? Yeah, I'm going to give him superstar dev. He should be at least be that. And dude, the receiving core, everything's stacked. Everything's just so stacked. Our left tackle is only a star dev, though. That's fine with me. Offensive line is still good. Bradley Chubb is now an X factor. Love to see that, and everybody else here just looks the same. So apart from that, guys, let's see if Byron Jones can get one more Super Bowl win. He should definitely retire after this, though. And apart from that, guys, it's not time to move into it. Here we are in Miami with home field advantage for the Super Bowl. 7-3 against the Lions, 14-3 against the Lions, and it's okay. <laughs> Lamar is not going to be able to do anything unless he's got this comeback. Who knows, though, as it was, okay, 21-10 in the third quarter, fourth quarter now. Okay, the comeback, maybe. One score game, not two score. It's too late. They're done. They're done. 28 to 13, back to back Super Bowls as Lamar Jackson loses with the Detroit Lions. Byron Jones and Xavier Howard should both retire after this. But apart from that, guys, let's move in to the re signings. And Asante Samuel Jr. wins the Super Bowl MVP. Desmond Ritter wins the league MVP. There are no other awards here for the Dolphins, and we've already looked at the team upgrade, so let's move to the re signings. In the AFC East, Xavier Howard has a brain, but Byron Jones does not. <laughs> Byron Jones re does not retire. Leighton Vander Ash, I just don't want back. You sure, do team friendly. That's the best I'm gonna do. We just won the Super Bowl back to back. Why would you not want to be here? Yeah, okay, yeah. Bye. <laughs> See you later, Juwan Johnson. Again, I'll do a one year deal with you, bud. Just another one year deal. You want to play for a new team? Sure, go play for a non Super Bowl winning team. Byron Jones. Feels disrespectful to let him go because he's been, you know, whatever. He's, he's going to stay on for another cheap contract. And Emmanuel Agba, sure, whatever. <laughs> we'll sign. Oh, no, he doesn't want to play. He had a high interest in playing with us, and I gave him a neutral deal, and he's like, nah. Uh, Noah, three-year deal, and he signs with that. Everyone else can walk. And how much money do we have to spend? $91 million. Okay, let's get to free agency. After free agency, I only got Lucas Van Ness because I didn't really need anyone else and I didn't really like the middle linebacker class. So anyways, guys, it's now time to move into the draft. So I'm now trading away my first round pick and my third round pick for Jordan Brooks. And I don't really have that much draft capital left other than a second round pick. So I'm not going to worry about it and get to the end of the draft. Now, this is the monstrous team that we have built 
around Caleb Williams. Look at all these X factors, dude. It's crazy. Defensively, we're looking pretty good as well, like what we got. And I don't really think there's much more to add. Maybe another defensive tackle. Don't really care. Let's move into the fourth and final season and just jump into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs going 12 and 5, top of the division, coming off a loss to the Eagles. No first round bye, but it's fine. Caleb Williams can do it again. Top 10 QB, fourth best offense in the NFL. And defensively, we're at 21st. Doesn't make sense. 4,600 yards, 34, 36 touchdowns, not 34, and nine interceptions. Najee Harris, 17 touchdowns, 5.6 per carry, continues to be dominant. Jordan Addison, 18 touchdowns, 1,300 yards. Jalen Waddle, 1,100 yards, three touchdowns only, though. And Jordan Brooks, 129 tackles. Justin Flo with 114 tackles for a loss, 19 for Bradley Chubb. Sacks, only nine for Bradley Chubb and eight for Jalen Phillips. Interceptions, three for Justin Flo. Love him, dude. Zero safeties and one defensive touchdown for Kyle Hamilton. So... Let's see if we can beat the 9-8 Denver Broncos to move on to the divisional round for another playoff run. And we do. 41-18 here to face the 12-5 Indianapolis Colts to see if we can move on to the conference championship. And we do. 42-21 here to face the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think Caleb Williams only has one playoff loss. And that was in the first year to in the conference championship. And we're here to face the New York Giants in the Super Bowl for the third year in a row. And we lost the Giants in the final year. Jalen Hurts on the Giants wins the Super Bowl MVP. Lamar Jackson wins the league MVP. There are no awards here for the Dolphins. And apart from that, guys, yeah, unfortunate way to end. But at the same time, we made the Super Bowl three years in a row and won it twice.